the power supply was bad. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, you probably want to know more about it. Like, you know, how did I figure that out, and what did I put in there instead, or what were the clues? Hmm. So, yeah, this is going to be a slightly different video because I've already solved the problem. So, let's take a different look at how to approach this. Now, I've been trying to troubleshoot problems with my Windows 98 machine here for quite some time. I've tried replacing hard drives. I've tried replacing video cards. I've even tried repairing the video cards, and none of that worked. And I got to the point a little while back where my last good Voodoo 3 stopped working, and I had to switch to a TNT 2. And life's no fun without arbitrary restrictions that you put on yourself. And one of my restrictions is that I have to use Voodoo cards in my computers. So once I hit that point, I knew I had a real problem on my hands, because what are the chances that I had three Voodoo 3s go bad? Now, I was trying to use the Windows 98 machine for a different video and ended up fixing it along the way accidentally. I could have been recording it, but I didn't think it was going to end up being as big of a change as it was. So instead, let's work backwards from the solution and identify the problem from there. So let's start off here. This is the new power supply that I put in the Windows 98 machine. Now, I got this out of a computer I bought at a thrift store. Now, I'm not normally in the habit of buying more 90s and early 2000s computers at a thrift store. I usually have enough parts of that kind of stuff on hand that I would rather not waste the space on them. But this one caught my eye because I had a couple security camera capture cards and looked a little bit different from the outside. So I decided to chance it, and I think it was like 10 bucks or something. Inside of that computer was this monstrous 600 watt power supply that even has an AT connector. This thing is a unicorn for that time period. Why anyone would have needed that much power is beyond me. For reference, the old power supply I had in here was just a measly 250 watts, and that was actually pretty good for the time. I decided to use that power supply because I tend to load up my computer with a lot of drives and other accessories, and it seemed like it would be nice to have a bit of extra headroom for power. This graphics card was the final tipping point that made me actually look into this. This is a Voodoo 4 4500. Now, I mentioned this in the last video with the 98 machine. Hmm, Voodoo 4? Yeah, I don't know. But I was trying to diagnose AGP issues on another computer, and since this card didn't work, I decided it would be a good test to put in there. And much to my surprise, it did work. There was nothing wrong with it. Now, when this card originally didn't work, I didn't bat an eye because I bought the card at Goodwill for like $5, so it seemed perfectly normal to me that it would have problems. But once it worked in the other computer, I knew I had to take a closer look at this one to see what's going on. Now, I've reconnected the original power supply and put the TNT2 in, and let's see what it does when we turn it on. So it thinks it's doing just fine. And did you just hear that? The fan dipped a little bit. Now it's not booting because I don't have the hard drive connected. Now the fan dipping in and out like that is cause for alarm enough. Let's see what that's actually doing and measure the voltage going into the fan with an oscilloscope. All right, so here we're at two volts for division. Ground is at the bottom. Actually, I'm gonna move ground to right where that one's ground is. So we're actually getting 12 volts on the fan, which is to be expected, 12 volt fan. Now this is coming out of the fan. I suspect that is a tack. Um, let me see if I, yeah, if I slow that down, you'll see that change. That's not a PWM signal going in to control the fan. That's just reporting how fast the fan is spinning. So what I want to do is wait for the fan pitch to change and see if the voltage drops. Well, we can see it just there. It's actually moving back and forth. Uh, the speed is not very consistent, but the voltage doesn't seem to be dropping that's powering the fan. So I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna put in the Voodoo 4, and then we'll see if the power load changes. All right, now we have the Voodoo 4 in. I'll turn the power supply back on, and let's try and start up the computer. Well, it seems to think it's going to boot this time, so let's try 
putting a hard drive on it and increasing the load because I know it won't last long. So as of right now, I've rebooted twice, and I'm still only seeing very minor fluctuations on the power rails. So I think I'm going to try loading it a bit more and see if that pushes it over the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up two DVD drives and see what that does. All right, let's try it now. I've switched back to the power to the floppy power connector, and I think it's going to work this time. Twelve is. Ooh, look at that! That is a dirty 12 volt signal yeah that ripple's telling me we're definitely getting close it could be one of the lower voltage rails that's going directly into the motherboard that was causing it not to boot earlier why it booted this time i really have no idea let me run a game that'll put some serious load on the graphics card and definitely start to draw some power oh yeah i don't have the hard drive in with games on it huh we're definitely getting closer i'm gonna plug in some more drives and see if the ripple on there gets any worse Wow, when I hear the Bigfoot seek, that moves. I don't have it connected to the computer, so I can't force it to do stuff, but... Hmm. You know, I gotta say, that power supply is behaving pretty frustratingly well here. This is supposed to be a demonstration of a failing power supply, and here it seems to have repaired itself. But I know, if I even attempt to trust it for a moment, it will let me down. Well, even though the power supply is pretending to play nice right now, I'm sure you get the general idea of how it's misbehaving by this ripple when we first turn it on. Just to prove my point that that power supply is actually bad, here's when I first tried to boot the motherboard with the Voodoo 4 in it. Alright, so here I have the original power supply connected in the back, and let's see how it behaves when I turn it on. Wow, it just totally died. It didn't work, but what I wanted to show was that it would work with the TNT 2, but not work with the Voodoo 4. But when I went back to the Voodoo 4, it decided to start working again mysteriously. I'm not falling for this thing's nice guy act right now. So I'm going to open this up and start measuring capacitors, because it's always capacitors, and see which one is making this thing fail. Alright. Let's take a look. Uh... Mm. Ah. Yeah, I don't think I need an ESR meter for this. Ah, this is the capacitor plague at its finest. Leaky bulging caps like that are a dead giveaway of the problem. I wouldn't say that immediately opening up the power supply to look for leaking caps is a good troubleshooting method, but in this case, that would have saved me a lot of time. Well, I think that spells the end of the road for this power supply. There's nothing special about it. Matter of fact, its most remarkable feature would be that it has two 3.5 inch floppy drive power connectors, which is not that special. So I think it's just going to go into my scrap pile for use for cables and connectors. Weird, inexplicable problems with a computer like that are why I always try to suspect the power supply first. They seem to fail most often, and it's really hard to troubleshoot them. There isn't an easy way to test if a power supply is bad other than trying to throw more drives on or something else like that that uses power. Even then, like we just saw, it doesn't always work. Alright, now that the power supply debacle is over, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to answer some questions people have had about this computer. It seems like every time this computer is in a video, people want to know what its specs are. And, to be honest, I never really paid attention to them. This computer is mostly a collection of parts that would get the job done for me, so the specs were never really a big concern to me. But now, for the first time ever, I'm going to actually pay attention to what I have in here and create a list of the parts. So, let's start from the top. Here, so there's extraneous hardware in here, like this hard drive isn't connected, uh, this disk drive isn't connected, and we're just going to ignore those for now, alright? So, the parts that are actually being actively used by the computer are this Sony three and a half inch floppy drive. I don't know the model number, does it really matter? Next is my five and a quarter inch floppy drive, which is a TAC FD55 GFR149. Now, those who are in the FD55 GFR business will know that these are a pretty interesting floppy drive to have, and definitely one you want if you use your computer as a workhorse like I do. You can change the RPM settings on this to be able to read 360K disks. Next up, we have the NEC IDE 4-disc CD changer, which was featured in a video here. 
After that, we have a Mprex dual layer DVD drive. And then, of course, we now have the 600 watt power supply. Moving down a little bit, we get to the motherboard, the hard drives, and the add-in cards. So, we'll do the CPU, motherboard, and memory last as I manage to get some kind of CPU ID type thing running. So first up, we have a Voodoo 4 4500. Now this thing is relatively new to me working, like I said in the beginning of the video, I thought it was broken. So I still need to get comfortable with it, figure out how to configure it, what games run best, yada yada yada. Next up, we have a SCSI card of some kind that will be featured in another video someday. Um, I've, I've been working on something that's been just absolutely grinding me down for over a month now. And finally, we have some kind of Sound Blaster card. I don't actually use this for sound. I use a sound card built into the motherboard for no particular reason. This is just a game port adapter to me, so I can use my Sidewinder game pads. Next up, we have two 160 gigabyte hard drives. I think they're even both Western Digital. This one is used for the operating system and some extraneous files, and this one is used solely for games. So every game I have installed on this computer is only on this hard drive. All right, first off, you'll have to forgive me for the horrible colors here, because this software kind of sucks and it doesn't have really usable colors. I had to change my preferred black theme over to this because this text is always black and this text is always yellow. So the black text means my black background doesn't work, and the yellow text means that the default Windows 98 white background doesn't work either. So, first off, here's what we've got in here. We have an AMD Athlon XP, and it is running at 1.5 gigahertz. We have a, what's the chipset? We got motherboard information here, cache info, that's not it. Uh, what's this one? Extended feature flags. Uh, standard feature flags. Chipset info, all right, there we go. So, oh, that's weird. <laughs> it is not a Voodoo 5, that's a Voodoo 4. Wow, that's weird. All right, well, that's not gonna tell me what the motherboard is. All right, we'll just grab the motherboard model number off of it. Um, Ah, okay, it is a K7S5A Pro. Uh, uh, K7S5A Pro. There we go, so that's my motherboard. Um, we got any specs here? So we've got some stuff. Um, DDR or SD RAM? Really? It's both? Oh, well, you know, there are two different kinds of slots. 1 gig, which I do have 1 gig of RAM in there. I don't know if CPU ID showed that. Um, did it? Memory, yeah, 24, 1024, so it did. All right, uh, let's see. C Media Audio, yep. Um, 10 100 Ethernet, okay. All the usual inputs and outputs. Power supply, floppy. Wait, IRDA? This has an IRDA header, specifically? Oh, man, we're gonna have to print her up this thing. Let's see, three USB, oh, the, <laughs> all the headers are 1.1. I did not know that, that's hilarious. Front panel switch LED header, yep. Earlier, you may have seen that I was in BIOS while I was working on the hard drive. For some reason, my power button only works as suspend, so I was trying to configure it to be actual power off, but it doesn't seem to want to play ball with me. CD in one, CD in two header. Oh, it can do two separate CD audio channels. That's kind of cool. Separate wake on LAN connector. That's weird. How's that work? Award bios, all right. All right, well, that's, uh, I think that's about everything for that. I guess the final thing to take a look at would be the mouse and keyboard I'm using for this computer, which is far from period correct. And uh, really, this is the first time I've ever used these with it. I don't really have a set mouse and keyboard that I use with this computer. It's just kind of whatever is closest and will work. One day, I'm sure I'll have a preferred mouse and keyboard to go along with this. You might be surprised that it's not a Model M. Well, Model Ms aren't really that great for gaming with the N key rollover problems they can have. So you don't really want to use one of those for this. So for now, I'm just using this Razer keyboard and Logitech mouse. All right, well, now I think it's time we put the graphics card through its paces. So let's start off with Torok, um, which is a 3DFX game. So let's get that going. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. All right, let's get into this. So one of the big problems with this game on PC, well, there's several problems here, really. Um, field of view is literally 45 degrees, um, which sucks. The view distance is about 15 feet. And the horizontal sensitivity and the vertical sensitivity are wildly different. So it's more like an oval like that as you play that the sensitivity is in. You, if you move in a circle, I'm saying you'll make an oval. It's ridiculous. So, so this seems to be running really well. Now I tried to get fraps or something installed to get some frame rates, but no, it's not going to cooperate with me here. This is definitely really smooth though. Ah, eh, we don't need the keys. I'll just go. I've got full health, no reason to get the deer. Velociraptor. Come on, where's the portal? sensitivity kills. It also doesn't help that it automatically moves your view up and down as you jump. It was early into first person shooters. They were trying new stuff. Ugh, it's brutal. Oh man, alright. You know what? As good as Torok is, I think it's time we play a first person shooter with some good controls and go to Serious Sam. Now, unlike Torok, which gives you hardly any graphic settings, we can change quite a bit in here. So we're going to go full 1280 by 1024, and we're going to do everything. All right, how's this running? Oh, that's not bad at all. Ooh, yeah. yeah let's get a look here. So one of the really cool things about Sirius Sam's uh, Sirius Engine is the multi-texturing. Or as you walk up to something, it'll get a secondary texture applied to it, which just makes it look like it has one really high-res texture. Really cool. Hey, ooh, yeah, reflections look good. This slaughters my Voodoo 3, so comparatively, this is really good. All right, let's go ahead and start. And, uh, get going. Uh, ooh, ooh. Wow, okay, it's not so happy here. Alright, I'm thinking I should turn down the resolution because that just basically amplifies the problems. So let's try that. Oh, yeah, that's just done right there. Which is still a pretty significant resolution for... Well, 2001, okay, maybe not quite so significant. That was pretty average for then. Well, as fun as Serious Sam is, I think it's time to move on to the next game, which is Need for Speed 3. Need for Speed 3 may not be the most technically complicated game I can showcase here. Uh, let's see how far we can push this. That's it? Really? Wow. Okay. We're not going to have much going on here. Yeah, this is going to smoke Need for Speed 3. <laughs> I probably should have picked something more like uh, Porsche Unleashed or Hot Pursuit 2 would probably give it a good workout. Oh, yeah, it's just killing this. Three, two, one, Hopefully I have my controls go. right. It looks it. I don't have to shift, right? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, Voodoo 4 just obliterates Need for Speed 3. This isn't even a competition. I like the ultra real-time split difference. Updates too fast to be meaningful in the slower digits. Uh-oh.
is but just a scratch. Oh, I was wondering where the guy in eighth place was. <laughs> Took care of him. Oh, I almost made that look good. Well, all right. I think that's uh, all we need to show for Need for Speed 3 because it's just, it's a champ. It's way too easy of a game for it to run. How much video memory does it even request? It only wants 16 megs of memory for the system. It's a 90 meg game. You can almost fit the whole game in the VRAM. All right. Well, I think that pretty well covers everything I wanted to say about this computer. It's doing a lot better now that I've changed up this stupid dead power supply. So, it's uh, much happier. I do use this as my workhorse Windows 98 computer. I have to change the floppy drive quite a bit if I'm going to be making discs for vintage systems. So, it's really nice to just have this always working. It's really weird for me to finally have that Voodoo 4 installed and running after having it for years sitting around thinking it was broken. But it's cool to see a direct upgrade compared to my Voodoo 3s, because Siri Sam was a lot better, let me tell you. If this were a video about comparing the different 3DFX cards, I'm sure if I put the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 3 next to each other in Siri Sam, you'd see a significant difference. But that's a topic for another video.